Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this video is going to be a little departure from my normal, uh, well, I've been doing automotive videos and uh, I, I kind of like just as much to do woodworking. And uh, one of the projects I did uh, last year was this guitar. It is a, uh, a Dreadnought style Martin take uh, acoustic six string acoustic and uh at this point yeah it's it was i consider it a prototype because it was a very difficult project very difficult and uh although it came out pretty nice there are a bunch of things i would do differently and better second go around one of the videos i'm going to be posting soon is I'm gonna do a neck reset on this guitar, meaning I'm just gonna pull the neck off and try to adjust the angle, the neck angle a little bit. Uh, I'm not, I'm not terribly happy with the neck angle. The action's a little high, and uh, the intonation's not that great. So I'm, I, I could repair that, and I'll, I'll do a video on that, and uh, it'll, it'll be more good experience. But I have a, uh, a very good friend who helped me through this project Richie Murmur Murmur Guitars I'll put a link in the description for his uh, website he's a luthier who makes just phenomenal works of art basically uh, so he helps me out and he sent me a bunch of wood uh, sides top and a back different species he sent me uh, some mahogany which is what this is he sent me some it's hard to see here, some cedar, um, some, you know, some, this is some light cedar for the soundboard. Let me show this to you. Which I've already glued up. Uh, really nice stuff. It's about hundred thousandths thick. And I'll bring it over in the light. Straight grain, very nice stuff. I'll put the camera down and uh, it's got some great sound. So I glued this up and I made a jig to glue this up. Um, and I want to show you guys about that. Let me put this off to the side so it doesn't get damaged. Uh, just to show you how I, how I join those, I, I don't use a power joiner. Uh, I basically use a plane and the shooting board here. It's called the shooting board. And all it is is it's simple. It's just a few pieces of plywood uh, cut pretty straight here, a stop, a couple of clamps all around to hold my uh, work down. And I have some sandpaper adhered to the top here for a little bit of sanding after the fact but let me show you exactly this process here all right so very simply i would take uh, my work that i want to uh say i wanted to plane this edge really straight or join it uh by hand um essentially i put it in my jig i let it overhang you know a quarter inch doesn't really matter you just want it over the edge I clamp it down a little bit and I just use a jack plane here I'm only going to take off a little bit you lay the jack plane on the side on its side sorry rather lay the jack plane on its side and you make some passes so again you'll see Uh, the jack plane here is square to the work and I'm only taking off just a tiny bit and it's a lot of, a lot of trial and error you do that um, to both pieces that you're joining and I'll even take this when I'm when it's all said and done I'll lay it um, I'll stand it up on its edge like this and I got 220 
sandpaper here adhered and I'll just go back and forth a few times. And basically what I come up with at the end, I'm working on getting a very tight joint between these two pieces. Uh, a lot of times um, with guitar making, uh, you're trying to do a book edge uh, join, which means uh, you may have a couple of pieces of wood that were uh, essentially, uh, you know, ripped from one board and you have a mirror, you have, you now have a mirror image. And in guitar making, a lot of times it looks nice if you join, you join those edges together. And it creates a nice effect with the wood and it's called book matching. Uh, so what you could do, what I usually do when I'm trying to join two edges like this in a book match, I'll fold it back like this, um, clamp it down into my shooting board jig, and plane the edges like that together. And then when I fold them back, uh, they're on the same angle. So I could fold it this way, plane it, check, check it, maybe. And then once I'm really close, I'll go on the sandpaper. I'll stand it up uh, on its edge on the sandpaper and get that really tight. You know, sometimes you wind up chasing chasing gaps. It'll look really good. You might have a slight gap on the top edge, bottom edge, or maybe in the middle, slight. And you keep planing it and it, you open it up somewhere else and you know, it's what we call chasing that gap. So you get it close with the plane I find and then uh, the sandpaper really gets it tight. Because uh, sometimes when you plane uh, along the grain like that, you relieve stresses in the wood. Uh, you make a pass and you relieve some stress, the fibers move and the wood will actually move, you know, and open up on you. So the sanding is a little, helps out with that. So let me show you uh, over here. Um, I've already um, joined and checked everything. Uh, this is going to be a guitar back. It's mahogany, and I have a center strip of uh, walnut. And basically, I'm I don't I I'm using the center strip in this case. Get you a good view there. I'm using the center strip because. Uh, I didn't quite have enough material. Uh, I have a template here. This is a dreadnought, dreadnought style uh, guitar top template. And, you know, you want to leave yourself, you know, quarter inch uh, along the edges. Uh, just, just to for fitting purposes when you're you're gluing it to the guitar side. You want a little extra and then you just route off and trim off the ed excess uh, when you're doing your assembly. So I didn't quite have enough with this mahogany um, to do. The Dreadnought's a bit, uh, Dreadnought is a big, a bigger guitar. Uh, and I think this was originally cut, the, this, these, uh, this, this mahogany for the back was originally cut for a small style guitar and it wasn't enough so i basically just cut uh three eighths wide strip quarter inch high um strip of uh walnut and i'm gonna glue that in here now i just want to show you go over a little bit this jig i have here apologize for the shaky camera work but this is kind of ingenious the way this works i, I don't know what this is called i'm sure i could look it up and find out it's very simple. I basically have platform and I have uh, used uh, quarter inch by 20 nut inserts uh, in the side here so that I can use uh, some quarter inch by 20 and some four inch screws as sort of like clamps. And the, the, the basic concept here is you put your work in 
and underneath the work, you raise it up a little bit with a couple of scrap pieces of wood. Just a couple of scrap pieces of Boulon. And you position everything so that your work piece is, get this set up. Your work piece is in here and it's on a bit of an angle. So it's higher in the center because of the scrap piece. And you tighten up your clamps here, or your screws, your, your actual, you know, they are clamps. You get everything nice and tight. Now this is just a dry fit. Uh, you would get all that, you would glue everything, put glue on either side, on all sides rather, of the, the joint here. Get it all in here. Get it nice and tight. Tighten up all your screws so it's really tight. There's, it's it's gonna be a little gap uh, when it's in this position. But the idea is you pull out the center stock. You pull this out and when you push this down in the center, boy, it really clamps, clamps these two pieces together. When you push it flat, you put a call, clamping call down the center, really clamp this thing down, and it 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 pushes these pieces together. You have no gap at all. So that's the idea here. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, so this is just like a dry run here. So I am going to I'm gonna show you this. Uh, I'm gonna just glue this one up and let you guys watch how this goes. All right, hopefully I don't make too big of a mess here. Now I'm just using regular tight bond uh, glue. This is pretty good stuff. And uh, I'm gonna start by applying glue to one edge here. That is one piece. All right, now my center strip. You know, I think this will actually look nice. Uh, you know, having to use the center strip, it, it's a nice little detail anyways. It kind of breaks up the book match, which I'm not too thrilled with, but otherwise I wouldn't really be able to use this mahogany unless I was making a much smaller guitar. And uh, the I have all the plans for the dreadnought style, so uh, that's the guitar I want to make and rather than just let this wood be I would probably never use it and I'd wind up cutting it up and using it for something else so I figure we'll just use a center strip like this and uh, I'll do some other accents like with the uh, in the heel the heel joint there uh, I'll, I'll, I'll use walnut as well I'll just pepper it pepper the walnut <laughs> And then the last one. This. I'm gonna have a lot of glue squeezed out, and normally I would put parchment paper uh, underneath all this work and on top, you know, between the work piece and my calls, but I, I don't have any right now, and it's it'll be all right. I'll get it off without much tearing out of the wood. Uh, it's not gonna be a ton of squeeze out anyways. All right, so this is the really, this is the trickiest part to the whole process. It's just getting it in here for starters. Sometimes you gotta loosen up more than you need just to get it, the workpiece slid back. There we go, now we're in. So what I will do is tighten this up pretty good, making sure these edges of the guitar top, or back, sorry, are tight against the jig. And it's really gonna, it's 
gonna bow up in the center, and that's what you want. Because that is what gives you the ability to really clamp it down. All right, so it's in there pretty good. Just gonna wipe off a little bit of this excess now while I have it, the ability to do it. All right, so I'm gonna pull this out, the center piece out. And boy, that is tight. Now, now's the time to clean your, your glue squeeze out. So let me get a couple of wet paper towels. And I like using for my, for, for jigs, this uh, melamine, you know, with the this particle board with this white, I don't know, it's like a vinyl substance laminated on the top. And it just helps with this glue up. It, uh, the, the wood glue doesn't stick as well to that uh, as it does to plywood and whatnot. So, so I'm just going to get some clamps. I'm going to clamp. One convenient thing though is I, uh, some cutouts here for clamping. It really, so that way you can get a good squeeze uh, on the, on the part of the work piece that you need. So I got it clamped pretty well. Again, you want to make sure these edges right along your, your clamps are down. If you're feeling a little ambitious, you can even try to tighten the screws a bit. Get a, get a nice pressure. You don't want it too much. Just to make sure, once you see the piece really start to come off, the edges start to come up, that you got enough clamping pressure. That's it. So you let that dry for a couple hours maybe. Pull it out and you can start dressing up the wood. So that's it for now. I, th I have. A, I think I'm going to do a couple more of these installments because, uh, you know, I've made the top. Uh, I've. Well, I should say I've glued up the top, the soundboard. Um, now I'm gluing up the guitar back. So uh, the next thing I, I actually want to make a video is uh, bending the guitar sides this bend here these these radiuses it's one piece of wood from the center uh, of the neck here all the way down to the heel the center of the heel that's one piece of wood in this case uh, rosewood that I bend basically with heat and steam uh, I have some jigs for that I think that'd make a cool video so that that'll be uh, coming up next so Definitely stay, stay tuned for that. But uh, that's just it, really. That's going to be it. Uh, uh, like and subscribe. Comment if you have any uh, anything you want to add. Uh, you know, I'm no luthier. Uh, I'm, I'm a basic woodworker, but I, I love this stuff. And I basically learn on the go. Learn on the fly. So, you know, uh, any, any comments... For this, uh, any ideas, any ways you would do it a little better, uh, I'd, I'd love to hear from you. So like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, see you all next time.
belt broke. But you know what? We're okay. I was afraid it was gonna damage, damage the piece. Yeah, it broke like right here. And it was just about this far up, so not that even. But we could fix that. Let's check thickness. I usually like it around 110 thou. Just we're at 166. 162, 134. So I got a ways to go. I want to maybe take about 30 thousands more off of this. And that'll be a good thickness for this, but looks great. So I'll get that belt. I'll get the belt replaced and we'll finish this up. All right, gang. Sorry for the noise. I got the heater on today. Um, I replaced the sanding belt, <coughs> I replaced the sanding belt in the, in my uh, sander, and I did a couple more passes on the, my guitar back, I did uh, both, both sides, looks pretty good I think. Give you an up close shot of the mahogany with the walnut centerpiece. So, if I use my caliper, I'm about, yeah, it's a little bit different all around, but it's roughly 110 thousandths. Some spots it's 95, um, 95. I can get it a little more uniform, uh, but I'm shooting for, I believe my plans call for, so this plans call for the sides to be 2.4 millimeters and the, the back to be 2.8 millimeters. I just got to take off just a little bit, <clears throat> you know, probably about. 20 thou at the most so <clears throat> I'm gonna work on that I'm gonna get that do a little more planing <coughs> sanding to get it down to the right thickness and then uh, the sides are the same mahogany I'm just gonna plane them down or sand rather uh, I believe it's 2.4 yeah 2.4 millimeters <clears throat> uh, all right so let's do that and we'll get all these ready to uh, go on to the next step I think that's perfect. We are close. 106, 108, it's about 100 thou, 84, 90, 90, 90. So we're, you know, we're not 2.8, we're a little thinner, but it's perfect because it's uniform. It's got a good sound. So I'm gonna store this under a piece of plywood so it stays flat and I'm gonna work on the sides now just to give you an idea. Uh, see if the camera can pick it up the shape of the guitar top is on there it's hard to see see the faint pencil line 
Alright, so we'll store this under a flat surface so it doesn't warp and bend too much on me. And uh, we'll start working on the sides. Alright, that's about all I'm going to take them down to. You know, these calipers aren't the greatest. Um, thank you, heater. And, you know, it's roughly, I've got 98, 95, 90, 90, thousandths rather, 108, 120, 118, 126. So it's, it's varying slightly. I think I might put this one through one more time uh, at the same setting by itself, just so I get it exactly at the right thickness. And then, uh, then we'll be done, then we'll be ready to bend these, which will be the next episode. So I'm going to do that and I'll see you all next time.